So the RPA challenge is all about taking data from an Excel sheet and bring it into the RPA challenge website through UiPath. But there's so much more to the RPA challenge than just some data entry. This is why I divided it to three levels. And today we're going to see the first level, which kind of consists on doing simple data entry from an Excel sheet into the RPA challenge. Let's jump right in. Okay, so quickly before jumping to UiPath, we are going to go to rpachallenge.com. And here we are going to download the Excel sheet. And the goal of this exercise or this practice is basically take every row in here and do data entry inside here and then click on submit until we get the last page where it will tell us how much time it took us to finish the exercise and how many fields have we gotten right or wrong. So they just do a really quick simulation just to make sure that everything is working. Let's click on start and then we are going to click on submit multiple times until we get the last page where of course it's going to say your success rate is 0%. We didn't do, do any data entry and it took us six seconds to do it. So 6,000 milliseconds. So that's basically it. Let's download the, uh, the challenge. Good. So we have just downloaded. Let's close this and then let's open up UI Bat Studio. Good. Let's create a new process. Let's call it RPA challenge level level one. And here why the process is being created. We are going to copy this, uh, this Excel sheet and we are going to put it inside the new file that we have just created, RBA challenge level one. So let's put it in here. That's good. So let's go back to UI Batch Studio. Let's click on open main workflow. And here we are going to search for our first activity, which is read range. So we are going to pick this activity, read range workbook. And here we have to put the path of the workbook. So let's just click on here for browser file. And let's click on challenge one. That's good. So here we have the file and then we have to get the sheets inside of the Excel sheet that we want to read. So that's going to be sheet one. So let's copy the name. Let's click on enable editing. Let's copy the name, control C. And then let's put it inside here. Should be a string. Just put it inside here. So now we need an output. So let's go to variables and create a new data table as output. So it's going to be challenge DT. And this is going to be a data table. Why? Because the output uh, type that is accepted is data table. So let's put it in here, challenge DT. Good. Now we have the data table that we have already read in this variable. So the next thing we need to do is search for use application browser. We're going to drag and drop the activity. And here we're going to indicate the websites in which we are going to do the data entry. Let's click on indicate application to automate. Here, let's click on F2 just to wait a little bit. So F2, we give it five seconds and, do it, and then we go to the, the website. I'm going to click on the website to indicate. Good. So now it's recognized that it's RPA challenge. Now, before starting the data entry, I need to click on this button start. So to do this, I'm going to search for the activity click. I'm going to drag and drop it. And here I'm going to indicate an edge. And I'm going to click on the button start. Here it recognizes the selector. Let's see what this selector is all about. So as you can see, I have a fuzzy selector, a computer vision, and an image. Uh, for the moment, we're going to use strict selectors for this, uh, for this tutorial. So let's check the strict selector and let's uncheck the other ones. So as you can see, the strict selector only has the tag as a button. We want more uh, details to this button because we have multiple buttons in this page and we want to make sure that it's going to click on start. To do this, we are going to click on 
the open and UI Explorer. Here, it's going to open up the UI Explorer, which has elements and details. So we are going to choose amongst these unselected items to make sure that we're selecting the right item. So here we're going to choose the AA name since, since it has start and it's the only button that has start in it. So let's check AA name and let's click on save. So as you can see now, my element is button and the AA name is start. So if I click on this icon, show all matches, it's going to show me one match, which is the start, which is exactly what I want. So let's click on confirm. Here I have my first click, which is start. Now, what I need to do is, after clicking on start, is starting the data entry elements by elements. So to do this, I need to go through a row by row in the Excel sheet that I have. So to be able to iterate through rows in a data table, we need to use the activity for each row in data table. So I'm going to drag and drop this activity and I'm going to iterate through the data table challenge DT. So let's click on challenge DT. Good. Now, the first thing I need to do is start with the first type into, which is the activity that allows me to type into text box or any type of element on the screen. So let's click on indicate an edge and let's choose first name, for example. So as you can see, the new selectors that is actually called descriptors in UiPath, they are smart enough to detect if an element is not stable. So in here, it chooses an anchor and this anchor uh, goes back to first name because it knows that this element will can change the selector of the elements can change in the future so this is why it had detected an anchor but since we are going to use only strict selectors for this practice let us delete the anchor check the strict selector uncheck the other ones and click on open a new UI explorer So here we are going to click on indicate, indicate anchor and we are going to choose first name. Good. So here we can see that it has created the anchor inside of the same selector. So we don't need to use a, an outside anchor. We are going to use uh, one anchor inside of the same selector. And here we are going to uncheck the ID element just because we don't need an ID that will change every time. The difficulty of this practice is that this ID changes every time. So the element is not stable in the screen and the ID uh, inside of the HTML is not stable as well. So this is why we need an anchor and this is exactly what we have just done. So this is basically the whole difficulty of the exercise. So let's click on validate just to make sure that it still finds the element. Validate, let's click on highlight. It highlights the elements, so we have found it. Good. Now I'm going to click on save. Now we are going to click on confirm. Good. And here I'm going to change it from input to first name. That's good. I have seven different uh, fields, so I'm just going to copy paste this into all of the fields. So let me copy paste it one, seven times, five, six, and seven. And now I'm going to come to the second one and I'm going to name it last name. And here I'm going to go to properties i'm gonna go to properties and under properties i will go to targets i will click on the plus in here and then i'm gonna go to the strict selector that i have in here 
I will click on the three dots and this first name, I will change it to last name. Like this, I will click on validate just to make sure it has detected the elements. I will click on highlight and here we can see that it have changed the first name to last name. So it can detect it. We're going to click on OK. I will basically do the same thing for the rest. So for email, rolling company, etc., etc. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to fast forward while doing this. Good. So now we have finished this part. This is basically the biggest part that we need to do. And all we need to do now is write the current row, meaning that every column in the correspondence field. So first name and first name, last name, and last name, etc., etc. So we're going to copy current row and we're going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to use parentheses and inside them, I'm going to write first name. And then I will click on to, to string. So let me copy this. We'll go back here. And now I will click here and I will replace this with last name. So one problem with last name, if we go to the Excel sheet, we're going to find that actually last name has a space at the end. And this space actually is a problem. So either we change it, either we delete it in the Excel sheet, or we add a space inside of uh, your iPad. So it's up to you. I prefer to delete it in here. So I always like my inputs to be uh, one structure. So I always like my input to be uh, to be cleaned. And here I go back to your iPad and I will just keep it as last time uh, like the other ones. Let me just paste here. So here is going to be email. Good, so now we're done. And one last thing, before uh, running the process, we need to add a click, because every time we uh, write the fields, we need to click on submit. So let's add a click, and here we are going to define the element, and it's gonna be submit. So here I'm gonna use always a strict selector. Let's deselect the other ones. And here I would have a submit. So let's just click on confirm. That's it. And now let's debug the process. Let's minimize this and see what's going to happen. Good, so it has finished, and as you can see, it has finished in 64 seconds. So as I said, the level one, we don't care about the speed of the process. We only care about the rates, and we got the 100%, which means that we have reached our goal, which is basically 100% rate. So everything that we have in Excel sheet, we have correctly did the data entry into this website. So we don't care about this for right now. This is for level two. This is where we're going to talk about speed, how to improve it, and how to go to speeds like 30 milliseconds. We're going to see about that, and we're going to talk about everything that's happening around it on LinkedIn or uh, elsewhere. So this is going to be for level two. But for the moment, we have just have created a process that reads the Excel sheets, and then it does the uh, data entry inside of uh, the RPA challenge with no hassle. So thank you guys for watching, and tune in for level two. Catch you guys in the next one.